Hey, what's up guys? Aaron here from Clever Programmer. And today we're going to be talking about something called sets in Python. So let's get started. So first of all, a set is just like a list or a tuple as I explained in previous videos, but a little bit different. So we already um, ate up all the options earlier, right? So list use brackets. Okay, tuples use parentheses. So what's the only thing left? Oh yeah, braces. So you might be thinking, okay, so what if I put something in braces? And that's exactly what a set is in Python, okay? So a set is basically, it's another way to group a bunch of things together in Python if you have a bunch of things together. But what's special about them, besides the braces, um, to, to, to code them out, besides those is you cannot have duplicates in a set, all right? You cannot have any duplicates. So if I had um, the numbers one through 10 in the set, and then I tried adding 10 again, it would just ignore it and it wouldn't add it to the set. But if I tried to add 11, then it would add it to the set. Um, a set can grow and can grow and um, get smaller as well, I believe. Uh, but so it's not like a tuple, it's not like constrained like a tuple, but you can, so you can add things to it, but you cannot have any duplicates and um, it's also unordered. That's the thing I was trying to remember. It took me, it took me a little bit. It is unordered, so you cannot iterate through it in any particular order. So you cannot be like, oh, set at zero equals this, set at one equals this, like you did with lists and tuples. So that's another difference. But the main thing is that it doesn't have any duplicates. So one really cool thing you can do with sets is actually have a list that has duplicates in it of whatever um, it is that you want, and then change it to a list, cast it to a list, no, sorry, cast it to a set. I talked about casting earlier. So you can actually cast things to a set. You can cast a list to a set and a set to a list. And uh, what that will do, what I just said, is if, if you have a list with duplicates, cast it to a set, the set will get rid of all the duplicates automatically, and then you can cast it back to a list, and all of a sudden, you got rid of all, all the duplicates in your list. So that's a, that's a very, very common thing you do with sets. But sets can also do a lot more. Um, let's explain um, what I just, I just said, though. So let's say we have a set S equals, um, let's just have a set of, um, I don't know, fruits. Let's go banana. Um, actually, let's do this. Blueberry and raspberry. Okay, so we just have two different types of berries here. So that's a set. Um, we can print out a set just like a list or a tuple. I'll show you that real quick. S, it'll have braces. See, braces here, not, not brackets or parentheses, but braces. And we have two different um, two different things here in the set. It's unordered, so you, you um, actually, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a random order. They, they're made in a random order. But as you can see here, raspberry is the second element, but when it's printed, it actually prints this first. Like, what, what gives? And then see here, now it's, it reversed its order. So it just, it, it spits out a random order. I don't know what determines that, but the point here is that a set is just like a bag of things. Like if you had a bag of different things and you just chuck them all in there, it's just, there's no order to it. It's not like a nice sequential kind of um, one thing, two thing, three thing, four thing, five thing, okay? Um, so let's just try to add something to this set, okay? So let's say we have, we have blueberry and we have raspberry. Let's try to add something unique. So this function that you can run on the set or any set is just add. So you, you uh, write the set here, so set.add, and then you can add anything you want to this. So let's add strawberry, okay? A third kind of berry and run this. And as you can see, I had a set here that has two, um, two types of berries. And then I add a third type of berry and which is different than these two, so it added it. And as you can see, when I print it out, it's um, all three berries are here. Okay, you can also um, add other data types. It doesn't always have to be strings. You can have a bunch of different things in there. So we can just add four and then boom, four pops up. And as you can see in a random order, let's run it again, random order, run it again, random order. Okay, um, so that's the add, but let's try to add um, Let's try to add, uh, not strawberry. So we're getting rid of this. So now the set only has two things in it again. Um, let's try to add blueberry, okay? Oops. If we run this, this is actually not going to do anything because it's going to notice that this blueberry is already in the set and it's going to ignore it. So let's hit run. 
And as you can see, nothing was added to it. If this was a list, then um, the this element that we that we have here would have been added to this uh, to the list as well. But this is a set, so it didn't get added. Um, let's uh, actually, I want to show you guys that that little duplicate example. That's a pretty cool example. So let's say we had a list of just numbers. Okay, one, one, two, two. Oh. One, uh, if I can type it out, one, two, three, three, four, 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 five. Okay, so as you can see, we have uh, a duplicate three here and two duplicate fours here. If we printed this out, um, you guys can believe me that uh, it'll look just like this, right? If I printed out this list, so I'm not gonna bother printing that out. Okay, but what if we wanted to get rid of all the duplicates? What could we do? Well, I said earlier that we can actually um, put it in a set, we can cast it to a set, and then cast it back to a list, and then we'll have a list that get rid of all the duplicates. So let's just say, um, well, casting, first of all, we go like this, and then we pop the list in there. So we can say, um, no duplicate set. This is just a variable name, equals set of L. So what, what this is going to be is going to be a set of this list without any duplicates. So let's see what that looks like. Print no duplicate set, okay? And let's just comment these out so you don't get confused. Let's run this. Actually, let's get rid of this whole thing. I'll, I'll think of a different example later. So let's run, run this, okay? So we have this list here, one, two, three, three, four, 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 five, and then we casted it to a set and then we printed out that set here. And as, I, as you can see, we have a set because there's braces, um, but it got rid of all the duplicates, okay? There's no duplicates in here. Same deal if I had if I had um, ABC and even double quotation marks, ABC, because those are equivalent, and then I run this, only one of these is going to be chosen, a random one, I believe. Let's run this, and as you can see, ABC is, um, is there. Uh, but it got rid of the duplicate here because these two strings are equivalent. Um, but then you also want to uh, cast it back to a list. So we can just go like this, simply like this, no duplicate set. And then we can say no duplicate list, right? That makes sense. Yeah, I should, I, I don't know. I, I, I tend to use um, L for like lists and stuff. It's probably not the best idea, but it's a bad habit I'm trying to kick. If you can avoid developing it in the first place, I'm not doing a very good idea right now by being a bad example, but maybe actually like name it of something like this, okay? List of numbers. Why don't we just do this now? I might as well do it now, okay guys? List of numbers like that. So we have a list of numbers and let's get rid of this crap so that this makes sense. We have a list of numbers here and then we create a set from that list of numbers with no duplicates and then we see what that set looks like um, actually, we don't need to see what this set looks like. Uh, let's just get rid of these. Boom, like that. And then, uh, um, and then we casted the set back to a list. So now, the this list here actually should be this list without any duplicates. So let's see what that looks like. And as, as you can see, we have a list here that got rid of all the duplicates here. So now what you can finally do is actually just change it. So list of numbers, you can actually just say is equal to no duplicate list. And what this will actually do is actually overwrite this one. So list of numbers. So what this does is, let's say you had a list of all these numbers and you want to get rid of the duplicates and just completely delete them. Like let's say you had a bunch of names in a database and you had you had duplicate or a bunch of people in a database and you had duplicate records and you didn't care about the duplicate records. You just delete them. Or you had a bunch of videos in a file on your computer and then but two of them are exactly the same and you don't need you don't need the duplicates. You can just delete them. Okay. If you don't need those, you could do something like that and. Um, You could do something like that and uh, get rid of all the duplicates. That might be something actually very useful for uh, this new course we have coming out called How to Automate Stuff with Python. Um, if we're going through file directories and deleting duplicates and whatnot. But uh, yeah, sets might actually come into play there. Just something to note there. Um, but yeah, so those are sets. Uh, there are also some pretty cool um, functions and methods you can run on sets. Uh, because are you guys familiar with uh, Venn diagrams? Let's, let me pull up a, a image here. So Venn diagrams okay diagram so the, these things here 
okay? You, you see this thing here? You remember these two circles? You might've learned this in school and it's like, oh, there's like everything in set A, thing in set B, and then there's an overlap. This is actually what sets are for, okay? This is what um, sets are used for in Python. So you can actually have sets of things like this and do logic like this. Like, oh, okay, there's all of these people and then, or um, let me think of a better example. Um, actually, okay, yeah, I, th I thought of an example. Let's go back here. Let's get rid of all this, okay? Remember, sets have braces, so we're going to be cr we're gonna be creating a uh, a um, we're gonna have two different libraries, okay? So let's have library one equals a set of uh, I don't know, Harry Potter, <laughs> Harry Pooper. Uh, yeah, I'm actually five. I am. <laughs> I'm not 24, I'm five. Uh, can't multitask. Uh, Hunger Games, sure. Hunger Games and Lord of the Rings. Okay, so we have uh, one set here and then we have library two. And then we're gonna have a different set of books here. So we're gonna have Harry Potter, okay. And we're going to have uh, Romeo, Romeo and Juliet, all right? So we have these two separate libraries that have a bunch of books in them. Um, these are just strings. We're just using strings to like signify books. And now we, so we have two separate sets and we want to start doing this Venn diagram kind of logic. So there's a bunch of different functions you can run, okay? On, on sets to figure out uh, the overlaps and whatnot. So let's, let's start with, um, I already went over add, right? I believe you can, you can run. Yeah, yeah, I did, I did. You can add things to a, to a set by just going like this and it'll only get added if it's not already in the set. But first, let's uh, let's try this. So we let's we have library one, okay, and then we could um, we first of all you can just add two sets together, okay. You can add two sets together to put it all together, but also it'll get rid of duplicates. So you notice here how there's Harry Potter in both of these sets. So one of these will actually get um, ignored, and then when we add these together, it's actually going to have everything in here. In this one, plus Romeo and Juliet, and it's just gonna ignore this Harry Potter, or, or it's gonna ignore this Harry Potter. What did, what did I do? Um, so let's just try that. So you, this, the function is called union. Union is just a word um, that you use um, in in math when it comes to Venn diagrams, that, that kind of math. I forget what it's called, uh, discrete math or something. Um, it's uh, unrelated, but you can you can add two sets together and that's what union does. So union just means you're gonna union them together in union, okay? So library one, union, library two, or library two, just like that, okay? And um, we'll just call it the town, okay? Let's just, uh, yeah, I'm gonna say that there's two libraries in a town. So um, all, okay, how about this, all books, in town that makes sense so if we have a town with two different libraries and we want to get all the books in the town without any duplicates then we can get the entire book list by just doing something like this you could go um library one union library two or you could do library two um dot union library one it doesn't really matter because it's the same same operation both ways let's hit run there uh, i didn't print it out uh print all books in town now let's hit run and as you can see oh let's go here now, now, as you can see, it created a set um, combining both libraries, but it got rid of the duplicate Harry Potter. So that's what union does and the power of a set. Um, there's some other, other methods and functions I'm going to go over too. So um, instead of union, what else do we have? I had to have it written down here on the side. Um, okay. Uh, now we are going to, if, um, okay, let's say we wanted to find the books that were at both libraries, okay? So we could be like, okay, um, like if you if you just want to find the books that are at both libraries, so at both libraries. I don't actually know why you would want to do this in real life. Like, why do you want to know which books? Or maybe, okay, yeah, I guess that makes sense. If you wanted to be like, okay, if this one library burns down, yeah, it took a dark turn. <laughs> but if one library burnt down, what books are you gonna have in other libraries as well, okay? Uh, that are like backed up, then you can, so you can actually just run this uh, function. Instead of union, it's going to be intersection. Okay, so this is uh, intersection. This means what is it both in both sets. So what you're gonna get here is we're going actually going to get um, 
Harry Potter because this is the only thing that is in both sets. Everything else is going to be ignored. This is going to be ignored and this is going to be ignored. But Harry Potter is the intersection. So like when you have a Venn diagram, remember you have some things in one circle, another thing in another circle. You would have Hunger Games and Lord of the Rings on one side and then Romeo and Juliet on the other side. And you'd have Harry Potter in the middle where they where they um overlap. You know what I mean? Um, so that that's what's going to happen. Let's just, just run it and you can see how it... Uh, at both libraries, how it looks. As you can see, we get a set of just Harry Potter because that's the only thing that was common here. If I if I also had a Hunger Games down here, then this would be Harry Potter and Hunger Games. Okay, you're getting the intersection. Um, another another thing you can do is uh, actually get the difference. What difference does is it tells you everything in this set that's not in the other set. Okay, so. Um, if we have Library 1, which has Harry Potter, Hunger Games, and Lord of the Rings, and then we use the difference with Harry Potter, Rome Romeo, and Juliet, then it's going to ignore the Harry Potter and actually just get the difference. We're actually only going to get Hunger Games, Lord of the Rings, or only get Romeo and Juliet. We're not going to get all of it. Oh, just, just this part or just this part. You're getting the difference. Like, what's different about the sets? That's where you're getting the difference. Okay, so let's just call this... Um, uh diff okay diff equals uh library one difference library two so let's run this and see what pops out so as you can see lord of the rings and hunger games pop out pops out because we call library one and we want to see the difference with library two because library two has harry potter in it then we ignore it because um it has this in common so it just gets this if we reverse this then you would actually get romeo and juliet instead of hunger games and lord of the rings you see how that works so yeah, um, these are pretty much sets. Uh, there's a bunch of functions that you can use. There's a bunch more. I'm just going over all the all the main ones in these videos. But um, those are, oh, there's actually one more called clear, but I'll leave that up to you to go figure out what that does. Uh, look in the Python documentation for sets and see what um, the function dot clear does. Uh, probably, you probably already guessed it. Yeah, it clears out the set and make it completely empty. Um, but go and try it out yourself, maybe code it up. But those are sets in Python, uh, very useful for getting rid of duplicates. Remember that, that's one of the most common uses of it. But also if you're doing things like, you're doing like some weird logic things or running some like um, really weird algorithms. Like I, I've done some before in my schooling, but they're they're a very handy thing to know. Um, know that's, uh, that's that sets are the braces one and that they're getting rid of duplicates. I probably said that 300 times by now, but yeah, getting rid of duplicates. That's the main use that I know um, sets are used for. So that's it for this video, guys. Uh, thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time. Good bye.